Hello students, welcome back to Capman Academy and today we are going to talk about very interesting topic of food technology which is the Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids. Right, so Newtonian fluids are the one which actually follows the Newton's law of viscosity which is given by the equation in which tau means your shear stress, micro means the viscosity of the fluid and dv divided by dy means velocity gradient right so the fluids which actually follows this equation those are called newtonian fluids and very good example of newtonian fluids here is that water in which the viscosity of the water does not change it does not change right but there are some other type of fluids whose viscosity changes at in certain environments and those fluids are called your non newtonian fluids and when the fluid does not follow the newtonian newton's law of viscosity your equation here it becomes tau is equal to k dv divided by dz by the value n and this equation whole equation is called your power law equation in which k is your constant of proportionality and it is also equal to micro viscosity right so in the newtonian fluids this value n it is equal to 1 so when this value will be equal to 1 your fluid will be newtonian fluid which means they actually does not change their viscosity under shear stress or shear rate so this value here will be zero right all other type of fluids which does not have this value they are your non new Newtonian fluids. Right now, the non Newtonian fluids they actually vary from one fluid to another fluid. So, they are actually studied under the heading which is known as rheology. And according to the rheology, categorized into number one, in which n value is less than one. And second, in which n value is greater than 1. Right? So, in these type of fluids, they produce a concave downward curve. As you can see in this image, the downward curve, in this case, n value is less than 1. Right? And the property of these fluids is that, in this case, the viscosity is high at low shear stress and as you increase the shear stress in the fluids in this case the viscosity of the fluid decreases right so these type of fluids are called pseudo plastic fluids plastic fluids for example you can talk about tomato puree which is in the starting point at first starting point it would be very much viscous right and as you apply the shear stress on it it will become less viscous right so when this change is occur under the time then these type of fluids are called thioxotropic fluids when this change does not occur over the time or not dependent on the time those are called pseudoplastic fluid and when the change occurs which is dependent on the time those are called thioxotropic fluids right so 
the two type of fluids are comes under the first category first is your pseudoplastic fluids which are independent of the time and second one are the thiazotropic fluids which are dependent on time right and those are also gives a shear thinning effect which means at starting start point your fluid will be very much viscous and as you apply the shear forces that starts to get thin right or you can say less viscous and in this case your n value will be less than 1 right another type of the non newtonian fluid is that in which your n value is greater than 1 in that case viscosity will be low fluids will be less viscous at low shear stress right and as you increase the shear stress here then they starts to become more viscous for example your crystallized crystallized sugar solution sugar solution so as you recall sugar solution in the starting point it is less viscous and as you apply the shear stress it actually changes or become more viscous it produces the upward curve in the graph right and this is called shear thickening effect in the fluids and those are also known as dilatant fluids and example here is water and corn starch right so under the zero viscosity in some circumstances under zero viscosity under the low shear stress when the viscosity will be zero and the shear stress will be low those type of fluids are called rheopactic fluid rheopactic fluids right there is another class of the fluids which is known as bingham fluids bingham fluids right and in this case actually they actually wait for a particular stress level to reach they actually wait for stress level to reach and when this stress level point will be reached then they start to become less viscous or you can say they starts to flow and the example of the bingham fluids are different type of slurries like cold slurry and different type of paste so if you see them on the graph it will make a straight line so they actually yield a particular stress level then they starts to flow in the fluids right so this is about the different type of non newtonian fluids it is a very important graph because sometime question can be asked from here so your pseudo plastic are the one which have the value n less than 1 and your dilatant fluids which have the n value greater than 1 and your newtonian one they will have n value is equal to 1 and they will give you the straight line in the graph right so that's all for the today thank you